so last night <clears throat> I'm pretty much uh, you know I'm, I'm starting to get tired I'm at the point where I'm gonna go to sleep and it is late it's later than it should be I should be asleep already but I hadn't fallen asleep yet and then all this stuff just started coming like rushing back into my head because I've been thinking well as you know recently I've been doing so much work in regards to moving to Washington <clears throat> it's kind of surreal because I'm thinking, geez, you know, in one month's time, uh, my girlfriend Leanna will visit again. It'll be her last visit to Connecticut. It may be one of the final times that we're ever in Connecticut. And we're basically going to make a bucket list of things that we're going to do when she visits. It's the final time we're going to be doing things that we like to do in Connecticut. You know, and so as, I, as I'm thinking about all this stuff, all these things, I start reminiscing on a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, thinking about old friends, thinking about old times, about when I grew up, what it was like, and all of a sudden the memory of, you know, my friend, who I've mentioned him many times before, but never really, ha I mean, I didn't go like super duper in depth or anything about uh, circumstances and things around him. Uh, pretty much because I hoped that one day I would kind of do like a tribute to him because he passed away when I was in high school <clears throat> he was uh, the person who I've accredited with giving me my competitive drive, the drive to want to do things competitively, namely Street Fighter. And I really don't think that I ever would have ever played Street Fighter competitively <clears throat> if it weren't for him getting me into it, motivating me to do it. And, uh, you know, all these things just started flooding into my head about him because I've, you know, it's been 15 years really now since he passed away and uh it really got to me because i was like wow this is it i'm leaving connecticut this is surreal i'm leaving it, my hometown my hometown my home state my area where i've been my whole life i'm finally gonna leave it permanently and i may be back to visit but this is pretty much you know it <clears throat> and as i was thinking about this i realized and this is kind of messed up i know it's kind of messed up and those of you who maybe have been through traumatic events in your life will understand, and many of you who haven't aren't going to understand. But, you know, people deal with traumatic events differently. And when, uh, when my friend passed away, I really didn't have a way to deal or cope with it. I didn't have anyone who was like a close friend who I would talk to about that kind of stuff. And so a lot of it just kind of got held inside. And a lot of it was just kind of like denial. Um, I went to his wake. And I felt like I was standing on the fucking planet Mars. Seriously, because, like, I just couldn't... It was so not real to me. You know what I mean? Um, and the whole thing, my whole life has kind of been like that. In fact, I have never, until last night... Well, like, until this morning, I guess I can say... <clears throat> I never actually even looked into uh, the true story of what happened surrounding him. And surrounding the person who, who murdered him. And I never followed up. I never found out. Because it was kind of like it was too painful for me to do so. It was too painful for me to look into it and find out what really happened. <clears throat> and here we are 15 years later, you know. And I'm sure, and, you know, all this knowledge is now public. It's not like it used to be where, oh God, good luck trying to find out what happened in the court system. No, all this stuff's public record now. <clears throat> and, uh... Uh, last night, for whatever reason, again, all these feelings came came flooding towards me. Uh, you know, being that I am going to be leaving Connecticut shortly, and I, I just, I, I, I just, at that point, spur of the moment, jumped online, and I looked up all the information about what happened, all the circumstances around what had happened, uh, and quite literally, all the stuff that I had never confirmed, all the stuff that I just believed because, you know, other people who knew, uh, my friend had told me where it was absolutely 100% true. I don't want to go too much into detail about it right now because uh, I'm going to tell, explain to you right now on the pre-stream, <clears throat> you know, how I'm going to handle this. But uh, basically, you know, it all came hit me. Like, it hit me like a fucking freight train. Let me put it that way. When I've actually read in black and white what happened, what happened to the guy who murdered him, all this information, you know, flooding to, to my brain and my head and... You know, it, it really did take a toll on me. And uh, I realized something, and this is so crazy, and I know you people might even say, wow, this is nuts. 
back in, I believe it was either 2008, somewhere along the lines, at one point I went to the Midwest, and I don't even remember if it was Midwest Championships or if it was uh, one of the qualifier tournaments that we went to to try to go to SBO. I don't remember because in my mind, my subconscious has basically shut this off. But I know that at one point, someone who had met my friend when he had gone out to the Midwest for a tournament in the 1990s and had taken about 13 photos with him in them <clears throat> came up to me and he said, Phil, I know who you are and I know that you used to be friends, uh, you know, with him. And I've had these for the past, you know, decade or so and I'd want to give them to you. And that meant a lot to me because I hadn't really thought about it in a long ass time. And, uh, but again, it's like the, the way that you cope with, with these kind of events is it can be messed up. So here's what happened. I took those pictures and, you know, I looked at them and I was like, wow, this is great. At some point, I put those pictures in the back of a drawer here in my condo and I completely forgot about them. And that's completely wrong of me that I did that. I should have immediately come home, scanned those pictures and put them up on the Internet and said anyone that knew him, Anyone who, you know, had any experiences with him, here they, here's some pictures of him that you can share. And let's face it, Facebook and things like that, it would have been a great way <clears throat> to disseminate that, that, that information. But that's not what happened. Again, my subconscious mind basically telling me, wipe it out. Wipe it out. It's too painful. And all of a sudden, last night, so now I'm on the internet and I'm looking up all this information about my friend's murder and he, what happened to the, 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 the criminal who did this. It... It, like, I swear to God, it was like a light turned on. I was like, I have pictures of him. I, I had really, literally never knew, known this. And then all of a sudden, it like clicked. I said, I have pictures of him. And I said, I got to scan these immediately. And I did. I ended up spending like an hour scanning photos, you know, in the morning of my friend uh, and putting them on my computer. <clears throat> and... Uh, Basically, I'm probably going to, well, not probably, I know. This Thursday, I am going to be doing an episode of my podcast, Hate Lie. And it's going to have its normal segment. It's going to have the intro segment where I talk about all the content I've been doing, what's coming up for content-wise. I'm going to give everyone a cumulative update on what's going on with my, my move to Washington because there's a ton of information that's happened that I want to kind of put all together for you guys rather than you watching 500 pre-streams. This will get you all caught up. I want to talk about gaming news. There's been some... Interesting things going on in the gaming world to discuss, but the back in the day segment of Hate Live this week is going to be about about my friend, my friend T, and about uh, you know kind of a tribute to him, and uh, hopefully this will finally kind of put it you know put it to rest. And not to say that I'm gonna forget him, but at least maybe I can take this weight off of my shoulders um, <clears throat> that I've kind of I've kind of had. Since, uh, since 1999 when he died. And, uh, I'm going to share some of those photos with you and I'm going to share a lot of stuff with you guys that uh, normally is stuff that I wouldn't. You know, I always had this kind of really, really foolish belief in the back of my head that one day, uh, and of course I'm talking before... You know, I got popular on YouTube and all that, but I thought one day, oh, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to, to be an Evo champion and I'm going to win Evo and I'm going to take the title home and I'm going to dedicate it on, on camera to T and I'm going to do all these things and, you know, always saying, oh, well, it's not the right time yet. It's not the right time. It's, well, you know what? There's never a right time. I know in the back of my head, I always thought, gee, when I hit the peak of my popularity, that's when I want to talk about T because then the maximum number of people will hear his story and know, <clears throat> you know, know about him and, and, and uh, that will be a, a tribute and an honor to him. But the bottom line is, how do you ever know when you're going to have the peak of your popularity? How do you ever know when you're going to have that? You know what I mean? And let's be honest that I really know that in 2011, that was going to be the most popular year I've ever known. There was no way for me to know that. <clears throat> and so I figure now is the right time, right? Now is the right time to do the right thing after years and years of burying this, these feelings and burying, uh, you know, this topic, you know, how many videos have I put out on the internet? Some 30,000 plus videos total that I've created 
it's time to get this topic kind of fleshed out and, uh, and to do the right thing. Because I know there's some people out there who probably were friends with him, who maybe, you know, were touched in their lives like I was. And, uh, you know, they don't have photos and they don't have uh, the opportunity to reminisce. And it's not fair. <clears throat> it's not fair when someone so young gets taken from us and the way that it changes things, and who knows what would have happened if you know he is if he was still alive today. He could have been, you know, one of the best players ever of Street Fighter. He could have motivated people to do different stuff. I mean, who knows? It's such a crazy what if scenario. And would I have ever done anything that I have done today if it weren't for him kind of pushing me and giving me competitive drive? I don't know. So I hope that you guys will join me. I know I sound horrible right now, and it's actually not because I'm tearing up. It's because of my congestion. <laughs> it has nothing to do with that at all. It's my freaking congestion today is killing me. Ugh. But uh, I hope that you guys will join me this Thursday for Hate Live. Uh, you know, it's going to be a very special episode. Um, and we'll see how it goes, right? We'll see how it goes, and at the very least... Uh, you know, I'll finally, I feel, honor him in the way that I should have a long time ago. Rather than pretending like it never happened and shoving it under the rug and locking it away, you know. It needs to be addressed and it needs to be talked about and it needs to, uh, you know, for me to move on. To me to move on to the next stage of my life, this is one of the things that, uh, you know, I never really dealt with. And I think it's time. Okay, so that's what happened. And I ended up being up awake literally till like 9 in the morning. Because all...